Welcome to worship at Plymouth United Church of Christ. It is so good to be in worship with you this morning. Whether you are here in the sanctuary or joining us via Facebook Live or YouTube, we are glad that you are here. We are an open and affirming congregation who embrace the LGBTQIA community as we strive to be an inclusive church, sharing the life and teachings of Jesus as a healing manifestation of God's love and presence in the world. And as a just peace church, an immigrant welcoming congregation with an intentionally accessible building, we affirm diversity in, its, in all of its forms, striving to recognize the ways that we have contributed to human injustices or oppressions based on race, sexual orientation, ableness, or religious beliefs, and seeking ways to challenge these practices towards a more just community of faith towards a spirit of truth and reconciliation, we acknowledge that Plymouth United Church of Christ has been on land whose indigenous caretakers are the Menominee, Ma Ma Potawatomi, and the Ho-Chunk people. Whether you are joining us today in worship as a member or a friend or a visitor, we hope that you find a welcome here. Let us worship. Come and worship. Be still and know the presence of the triune God. The creator to whom we come, the redeemer to whom we come, the spirit by whom we come. Hear these words. Be still and know that I am God. Please rise in body or spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, God is Here.
join me in our prayer of confession. We confess that the distractions and busyness of our lives make it difficult to listen deeply to your voice. Transform our priorities so that we make space in our lives to be quiet and listen to you. Jesus, seeker of the lost, we confess to becoming so shaped by the values of this age that your call on our lives is increasingly harder to hear. Transform our values so that we are shaped by the for the unloved and the unloved, and for the weak and the powerless in our society. Jesus, friend of the poor, we confess that too often any mission Transform our thinking so that we risk believing that all things are held together, not at the bottom of the financial line, but by you. Jesus, bearer of reconciliation, we confess that all too often in our faith communities, we harbor thoughts which estrange and make us hostile towards one another. Transform our hearts so that we are filled with the desire to forgive one another and to make peace. Jesus, source of faith, we confess that we forget all too quickly the words we say and pray and sing in our church. Transform our lives so that they remain connected to you at all times and in all places. Creator God, May the posture of our lives be shaped by listening to you, the goodness of our lives be shaped by love for you, and the service of our lives be shaped by a humility like yours. This we pray in your name. Amen. like to invite any children to come forward and join us for the children's message with James and Evelyn. Use your big voice. Mom wants us to do chores. Um, I'm just not really feeling it today. Maybe we could do it another day? But we have to pick up teddy bears, vacuum, sweep, your room's a mess. My room's a mess. We have to feed the chickens. We don't even have chickens. <laughs> All right. Well, then what do you suppose we do? I have an idea. It's a Bible story. Uh, not another Bible story. This one's a good one. All right. It's about two sisters, uh, Mary and Martha. One was relaxed and one was cleaning. Jesus wants us to spend time with our friends and family. Can we do both? Yeah. All right. <laughs> half today and half tomorrow. Deal. Today's first scripture reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 21. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, 
and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Here ends the readings for the day. have in mind, the God that you will put it aside, that you will speak boldly in this place, for we need to hear a word from you on today, for this is my prayer, it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The story of Mary and Martha is a very
Mary and Martha are good friends of Jesus, Martha is the proactive one, more outgoing of the sisters. She goes out to meet Jesus when he arrives. Mary, if you remember the context, that they have a brother named Lazarus. Lazarus, who remember, he dies and Mary and Martha are upset because they waited too long. And then, um, and then he's able to be uh, revived. Jesus comes to town after being on the road and stops at Mary and Martha's house. Martha is involved in many tasks, and she is overwhelmed. She can be any of us this morning. She can be that soccer mom, the volunteer who's overcommitted. She's also the person in the kitchen preparing the food. She's the one who is drinking food out at the block party as we had on yesterday. She's the one who prepares Thanksgiving meal and is in the kitchen cooking from um, dawn to dusk, making pies and side dishes, and when it's time to eat, she is too tired to do anything. Mary is more of an introvert. She is contemplative, she has a journal, she yoga, she sits and meditates, and she sits and listens to Jesus, she sits at his feet. Martha, I can imagine, is like one of the comedians that I remember that she is the someone who comes to your house and she has this gift. And like many moms, that maybe um, she says that she starts shoving things in the closet and, and being concerned about the little things in life, shouting at her husband, get the food, and throwing clothes in the closet, going over the house with a fine tooth comb, not only frustrating, herself, but also all of those who live in her household. Martha's stress level has reached a fever pitch, and she has unleashed on Jesus. But instead of responding in the same tone, what does Jesus do? Jesus says to Martha, he says, Martha, Martha. Sometimes we who have too many tasks, we who are overwhelmed by the world's concerns that we have to find ourselves running with our head on fire. We need the reminder from Jesus that we need a mirror held up in front of us to calm ourselves from our anxiety. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm your Jesus says to us, what are you fussing over today? What are you stressing about today? Could it be that God is calling us to pause and look in the mirror? God help us today. I suspect that we all need this reminder every once in a while. I know that I do. Now is the time to look around and see what difference that we can make in our kingdom. When Jesus is saying he's not comparing apples to oranges or the two sisters to each other, He's not saying both or, 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 but there are times for doing and there's time for listening. There are times for practicing and times for learning. However we choose to describe the discipleship for Mary and Martha, if we are honest, we have a need for both. We have a need for different reasons and different seasons of our lives. I like what uh, Renette Millet says, that she challenges us. She said the story tells us that that Mary and Martha are both doing, are called uh, doing ministry tasks. But Martha is worried and distracted. What distracts her? That sometimes the kingdom is large and diverse and, and but the main thing that I think that she's really concerned about is the fact that in the first century, the household cold, that women were not supposed to be seen um, in the presence of a man without another man. Jesus isn't married. And so he, she's meeting, Mary is meeting and sitting in company with, an un, with a married man and she's not married. And so the second thing is that women have certain duties. While Martha is concerned about the task at hand, that sometimes that the women, that the women work, their, their main uh, job was to uh, domestic work. But I think that what the third thing that we can learn from this text is Jesus is affirming Mary's desire to learn from him. Any, um, anything by doing so is challenging the very social mores of this culture. I like what Don Lawrence uh, Freeman, he's a monk. He says, when we do our work, we do it joyfully and peacefully. 
But Jesus is, again, not pitting one sister against another. One thing necessary is contemplative and active. Being comes before doing. If we lose part of our purpose, then we miss our mission. How do we cover that friendship with ourselves, the contemplative part? But he says that, think that the better part Jesus is talking about. He's not favoring, again, Mary over Martha, but he's not lifting up one for another over Christian value. Rather, he's inviting us to get caught up in the joy of being in the presence, so that we not forget the little things in life. That we get caught up in the worries and the headaches and concerns that we forget what is important. A few hundred years ago, a monk named Brother Lawrence, he kind of shapes this uh, statement. Brother Lawrence joined a monastery because he wanted to devote his time to quiet prayer and meditation. Once in the monastery, Brother Ma um, Lawrence found himself on kitchen duty. So much for quiet time. But in the middle of all his activity and getting up early to collect eggs and haggling at the marketplace and picking veggies and fixing meals, he discovered that God was with him in all the noise and the busyness of his life. He said that the time of busyness does not, um, does not with me differ from the time of prayer. And in the noise and the clutter of the kitchen, while several persons are at the same time calling for different things, I possess God in as great tranquility as I were laying on, on my knees. Shauna Atterbury shared in her blog, she says that as we make time like Mary to sit and listen and learn, we'll find being aware of God's presence in the ordinary business of our lives becomes more and more normal. We're also fine we don't have to be either a Martha or a Mary. At times we will be both. There are times when we'll be called upon to spend time with God alone. There are other times when we are busy serving our families, friends, church, and community. These two sides of life should move naturally in and out of each other. As we spend time with God, she says that God, she, will give us the desire to serve. And as we serve, we run low on our resources, but we always are called to go back to for the fresh and dwelling of God. And so what Martha, the story of Mary Martha, very familiar story, what are we called to do today? That sometimes again, we are hectic, Martha running to and fro, and maybe that's you today. Maybe you came in haggled and frustrated by what life choices in life. Maybe you've been stressed out, maybe yelling at you know, family and friends. Or maybe you're like, um, maybe sometimes you're like Mary who find times of contemplative work. But we, can, we need both. We need the Marthas, the doers, and we need the Marys. And that sometimes we are both of those. But what we're called today is to not forget the main thing, that we need God and we need action, and the two go hand in hand. Hallelujah. Our call to prayer.
pray for Emma Landowski, Sam Cohn, and Nick. Um, Emma let me know this morning that Nick's um, grandfather passed away, and so we know that the, um, Emma's father passed away recently, so they have a lot going on. We pray, pray for Claudette Fink, Karen Tidwall, Mary Beth Arnett, Anne and John Bales, Pat Ema, Chris Jamison, the Phillips family, Xavier and Isaac Sawyer, Orchard Upsinger, Mary Warren's family, and Jackie Weber. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for your testament of Mary and Martha. That God, sometimes that we are, find ourselves so fragile by Martha. And other times that God, that we are two, two of the same coin, that we are like Mary and we find ourselves centered and focused on you. But God, don't allow us to miss the main thing. Help us to hold the mirror up in front of us and remember that your presence is there with us. Help us to calm our, our nerves and, and our anxiety and focus on you. God, we pray for those in our community of faith. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for Nick and, and we pray for Bar Hockey and all of those who, who have lost loved ones. The God that you will give them strength, that you, you will give them peace that passes all understanding. The God that they will know your presence like never before. That they will feel the arms and the embrace and the support of a loving community. We pray for all of those who are struggling to stay in, in mind, body, or spirit. Allow them to know your healing touch. Allow them to feel your power, that they were empowered and loved by you. That God, we pray for this community of faith. That you will empower us with your spirit. That we will be the neighbors and the beloved community that you have called us to be. We pray for the person who came in this morning discouraged unsure of where, <coughs> what was next on the horizon, that they might go out encouraged to stay, knowing that they are loved by God, that they are called by you for such a time as this. That God, we ask that you will stir the gifts within us, that we will be your hands and your feet in the earth, that people will see that there's something different about us. Change us, O oh God that we will be your hands and your feet. Thank you, God, for all of your many blessings. We thank you for our leaders and, and our towns and villages and even in our nation's capital. Be with them. Empower them with your Holy Spirit. Allow them to work for justice and peace, not just for some people, but for all. Allow us to leave this place with gratitude in courage and in peace. And now we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Some of us we call you mother. Some of us we call you spirit. Some of us we have no knowledge of who you are, but today we say the Lord's Prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done.
talk about the 21-day challenge. Good morning. Good morning. We introduced this back at the beginning of or the end of June, and I'm hoping that many of you are participating. But if you haven't started yet, it's not too late. There's the 21-day challenge for racial racial equity habit building, um, and the idea is that for 21 days you you look at the resources that are available, you choose one thing to read, listen to, watch that brings up for us the notion of, of racial equity in a way that maybe we hadn't thought about, and that you take that opportunity then to engage and act in other ways. The handouts for this are on the, the table out here. There are also journals um, to keep track. If you have any questions, please ask me or any of the other kind of justice network uh, members. Um, even if you don't do it for 21 days, I encourage you to look over the resources because there's some really, really thought-provoking pieces on it. And here's a sticker if you're interested in showing the you. Thank you. Also, um, we're needing Sunday school teachers for fifth grade and younger for the fall. So, if you've ever thought about being a Sunday school teacher, we need you. Um, we also need you three helpers. Uh, our youth advisor, Kat, just for bouncing around here. Um, we need some helpers for you as well. We have great kids at our, our Plymouth Church and we want that ministry to grow. And so we need all of us to help our identify people that would be able to help in those ministries. Our backpack and briefcase blessing is August 7th um, at Lake Park. And um, we'd love to have you be there. So um, adults and children are welcome and everybody will receive a sticker or luggage tag. There is a special financial meeting with council after church on August 7th. Memorial service for Wayne Hockey is August 20th. Poetry in the Park is September 4th. It's a late uh, Sunday event at Lee Park. And then Rally Sunday, Back to Church Sunday is September 11th. Please rise in body and spirit and join us singing our closing hymn, Community of Christ, number 314. Mm -hmm. 